Good morning, good morning, New Hope Family Church. How you doing? I apologize. You guys ready to worship Jesus? Yeah. Oh, there we go. There you go. Let's do that one more time. You guys ready to worship Jesus? Oh, there we go. Let's let's stand up and let's get ready to praise him. Oh, dear God, Lord, thank you so much for everything that you're doing in our lives, Lord. We are just so grateful and thankful, Lord, that even with all this stuff going on, Lord, uh, in the world, I pray that you remind us, Lord, that we don't have to worry, Lord. As long as we're keeping our sights on you, Lord, everything's going to work out for your good, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
chains, let go of those chains, let go of those chains when we praise dead men. Come out of that grave, come out of that grave when we say God is. Let go of those chains, let go of those chains when we So some of you guys already know this, that it is this, this month for Pastor Pre- Appreciation, but I want to encourage you, follow your heart. If you feel that you want to individually give to your pastor, do so. God's going to bless you in a mighty, mighty way. Uh, be free, be willing, be gracious, and uh, be fruitful. We thank you again for this opportunity. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to step back up here. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Listen, thank you all for your kindness, uh, your words of encouragement. You, you all probably encourage us more sometimes than what we feel we encourage you. So thank you for being a part of this church. Those of you that are present here this morning, we had a full house this morning. It was really full. So I'm grateful that people are returning back to our in-person services. Uh, it's, it's a little difficult sometimes to preach to a camera, but we do know that there are people out there watching us or they'll go back and watch the replay. Um, once they get home, um, I'm guilty of that. I watch the replay. Not that I like to hear myself preaching, but I, I try to capture some of the things that I feel the Holy Spirit is maybe reinforcing because a lot of times I preach to myself. I, was that an amen? Amen. <laughs> so thanks for joining us this morning right here at New Hope Family Church. Again, those of you that are here, and again, it is Pastor Appreciation Month. I appreciate this pastor right here standing next to you. I appreciate you, Pastor. You appreciate me. We appreciate each other. We appreciate our daughters as well. Thank you for pouring out your love upon our girls. Uh, they sacrifice as well. Uh, we, when we have meetings, you know, I, w- I was out yesterday. It was my daughter's birthday in the morning. I had a meeting uh, with a pastor in the community, and I, you know, give away some of my time. And they're very, very flexible with, uh, with their time. And I, I'm just so grateful again for my family to help share my calling and the calling that we have together as a family. And yeah, we can't say thank you enough for all that you guys mean to us and that you guys have been generous to, to give, really, of your time, of uh, even your resources. Thank you for the gifts. So, Yes, I got a late birthday gift, so thank you so much for all of you for giving to me and, and making me feel special. Uh, we love all of you, and we pray for you, and we, um, we just speak God's blessings upon your life, too. Okay, let's pray before we continue to worship. Father, thank you for this opportunity. Lord, if anything, I just want to say we appreciate you. We appreciate all that you are to us. And as we prepare our hearts this morning, prepare our hearts to worship, I pray that we are able to receive your word, a word of encouragement, a word that will bring structure, rebuilding our lives to go forward into the purposes of God, the life that you've called us to live to help build your kingdom right here in this city, in this state, in this nation. God, thank you for your willingness to to use us the way that you want to use us. I just pray for hearts of obedience, God, even now that we set our hearts on you, that we're able to hear your voice through this time of worship. Father, will you give us the strength to obey you, to begin to move away from things that hold us back? I just pray, God, that we just continue to be open to be used by you in the days to come, in Jesus' name. Now listen, this morning we're going to take communion. We're going to ask you, you go right to your refrigerator, get some juice. This morning we have an interesting scenario. We actually have a white grape juice. Uh, we got the, the wrong cups. <laughs> but but uh, the Lord was showing me this, that 
How many of you know that we have a new wine that the Holy Spirit poured out upon the church right here, right now in this generation? So we're going to take that as a symbol when we take communion this morning. So go get some something, get crackers, get a piece of bread, get a roll, get something ready because we're about to take communion after worship. All right, let's worship the Lord together. Amen. In my mother's womb, you formed me with your hands. Known and loved by you Before I took a breath And when I doubted, Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made Cause you're in an artist and a potter I'm the canvas and the clay Sing that again in my mother's womb you formed me with your hands known and loved by you before i took a breath and when i doubted lord remind me i'm wonderfully made because you're an artist and a potter i'm the canvas and you make all things who work together and for my future and for my good. You make all things who work together and for your glory. beyond the clouds though I've walked through fire I see clearly now and I know nothing has been wasted no failure or mistakes cause you're an artist and a potter I'm the canvas and the clay and you make all things who work together
Cause you're not finished with me. Cause you're not finished with me yet. Cause you're not finished with me. Cause you're not finished with me yet. Cause you're not finished with me. Cause you're not finished with me yet. Cause you're not finished with me. You're not finished with me yet. Cause you're not finished with me. You're not finished with me yet. Cause you're not finished with me. Cause you're not finished with me yet. Cause you're not finished with me. Cause you're not finished with me yet. You make all things work together. For my future, and for my good, you make all things work together for your glory. Yes, Lord. And for your name, because when I doubt it, Lord, remind me that I'm wonderful. You're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay. And I know nothing has been wasted. No failure or mistake. Cause you're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay.
Father, for your love. Your love is overwhelming. And as we sing about your name and hallowed be your name, we just stand in the awe of God this morning. Come on, will you just lift your hands? And right where you're at at home, will you just lift up your hands? And Lord, we hallow your name. And we speak about your awesomeness and your amazingness and, and who you are. And we just take time to just hallow your name and say, God, you are great. You are great. You are a great God. And we worship you. And we stand and we acknowledge that you are God and that we, we, we're here to, to give you worship, to bring our praise before you, to honor you, to lay our life down. We put our crowns down and we humble ourselves and we worship you for who you are. You are God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. Thank you that we could take time to remember that sacrifice on the cross. And that we can live a life now worthy to be lived because of the blood of Jesus. Because of that sacrifice on Calvary's cross. And right now as we prepare, we prepared our hearts. Let's just take a moment. If there's any sin in our life, we just allow the Holy Spirit to remind us of where we missed the mark this morning, this week. Maybe it's through the whole entire shutdown that we have not honored God. We've fallen away from Him. But this time, right now, at this time, we have an opportunity to step back into the grace of God, into the love of God, and the mercy of God, and be received into His arms. Be received into the loving arms of the Father to receive the forgiveness of our sins. Once again, there's a, a time when we remember, we remember. We remember the love of God poured out on Calvary's cross. And we say, Jesus, thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. As you take your cups in your hands and the wafer, just go ahead and peel that out. I want to read something to you. You know, the, the um, Apostle Paul was just really good at communicating the message of remembrance of what we do on days like this. And we're called to remember that, you know what, we're, we've all sinned and we fall short of the glory of God. And in ourselves, we're not good enough to receive, and I'm careful to say this, but we're not good enough by way of us earning our salvation. We can never do enough good. You're not going to get enough brownie points out there to, in life to say, oh, I've done this, I've done this, and therefore I belong in heaven. That's not the way it works. The grace of God comes, poured out for each one of us. We all have sinned and we fall short. 1 John 1, 2, 1 says, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And we can come on a Sunday morning just like this to take communion, to call upon Jesus, the righteous one, to call upon his blood again to forgive us, Lord, if we missed it. So we just take a moment, Lord, we just take a moment to say, God, forgive us if we have walked in sin knowingly, we've committed sin and we've rebelled against your voice, your Holy Spirit's nudging, and we've deliberately gone against your will. Forgive us, Lord. And Father, if there's anything that we've done that we have not done intentionally and we've offended or we've caused sin, Lord, will you forgive us? Remind us. If that's something now, we just make that right. Lord, if there's any offense in our heart toward one or another, Lord, we just ask for you to forgive us to release that offense this morning. As we step out to take communion, God, I thank you for your forgiveness of sin, washing us clean this morning. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26, the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So will you take that wafer in your hand this morning? As you hold that, we just pray right now, Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for taking upon your body my infirmities, the infirmity of sin that has plagued my life. Forgive me. Thank you for taking that and enduring 
all of the punishment for me. For the wages of sin is death. And Jesus, you took my place so that I would not have to die, but I could live throughout eternity with you. And right now we remember, we remember everything that you've done and we take it to heart. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Let's take each church and this bread. Just take this cup in your hand. And as I said before, we actually have a different color this morning of, of juice represent, representing the blood of Jesus. But you know what the Holy Spirit just showed me really quick? That this is going to be a representation of the new wine that we have poured out upon us during this time, this season. It's a season that we forget the old and we move into the new. And that the old is, it's a reminder of us that we cannot put new wine in old wineskins. That we turn away from the old and we leave what was yesterday in yesterday and we move forward into the things of God, into the new season. So Father, as we hold up this symbol of, of the blood of Jesus and the new covenant that you've established with us, we also remember that when, when the Holy Spirit came, it was an outpouring of the new wine into new wineskins. We've been forgiven of our sins. We've been forgiven of our old ways. The, the old life has been forgotten and the new has come. So this morning, as we remember the sacrifice and the blood poured out on Calvary's cross, we open up the doors of our heart for the new wine to be poured into our life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for refreshing us, bringing life, eternal life, abundant life that we can walk in right here, right now in this generation. In Jesus' name, will you take drink? Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, that's refreshing. <laughs> that white grape juice is really good. I like that. In your own way, again, thank him. Thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. And we just want to say we love you with all of our hearts this morning. Amen. Before you see it, will you turn to your family or friend and will you tell them that I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to see you here this morning in person. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you're here. Amen. Love you. Amen. We're glad to see everybody this morning. Go ahead and have a seat. And I have a little scripture here for you this morning. You know, with that second song that we sang about him being the potter and we're the clay, it reminded me of a scripture I read um, this week. It's found in Proverbs 25. It says, remove the impurities from silver and the sterling will be ready for the silversmith. And so as God, as we allow God to remove the impurities of our life a little bit more every day, every month, every year, we'll be ready for him to use us in whatever way he sees fit. And he's so patient, he's so loving, he's so kind that if he finds something else in our life that we need to give up or let go, he's patient with us. And he helps us, he gives us the strength to get through it, to let it go, to get past it. So I'm just grateful for that this morning. So um, just a few announcements. Also, we have a time change coming up on Saturday. So remember, those of you watching too, remember to change the time on Saturday night before you go to bed. So you can be here or uh, be watching on Sunday morning. Uh, also, the first Saturday of November, which is November 7th, we have a women's event. Um, I forget the name. It's called, um, it's called um, the, the ba Back to the Basics of, of uh, Homemaking. Let me get my notes. <laughs> so Back to the Basics of Making a House a Home. That's actually a refined uh, title. They're making a house a home because you can live in a house. But to make it a home takes a lot more love, care, and really God shows you how to do that. And so if you are a woman, a female, if you're in high school, you can come. If you're a little older and wiser, you can come and just get together with ladies here at New Hope Family Church. And we are going to have uh, a little coffee and pastry in the morning. So if you want to get here at 845, it starts at 9, but get here 15 minutes early, uh, 845, and you get to have a little coffee and pastry. And then we'll have a little bit of uh, practical things for you. We'll have some spiritual things for you. Then we'll break for a, a lunch. And then we'll get back together again. And we'll also have a little bit of worship time. So um, we just want to encourage you to come. And also there's a sign-up sheet in the back. And you can sign up um, on your way out. Uh, let's see. Any other announcements? Uh, let's see here. I think that's it.
We do have a couple more. I'll take off of a few here in just a minute. But um, again, thank you for your kindness and your appreciation during the, the month of October. It's Pastor's Appreciation. And this morning service, we were blessed with uh, uh, a couple of gifts. And celebration of my wife's birthday in June, there'd been a big gap in between. But how um, many of you know that we were shut down? The coronavirus just kind of kept us from gathering. And so uh, the church and the deacons were so gracious to bless my wife with a birthday gift here this morning. Um, so happy birthday in October for June. <laughs> so she's like, celebrate, right? We're ready. Oh, do we get to go out to lunch for your birthday? I don't know, maybe. So um, I was going to say something about this too. You know, we celebrate life and when babies are born, but also we celebrate the passing of, of, of Christians, of saints of God that have lived a life. And there was a, uh, I would say a young woman who used to come to New Hope when she was, she was an an elderly woman. She used to come to Pastor Pena's afternoon services. Her name is Sister Emma. I can't remember her last name. Calderon? Did I get that right? Emma Calderon? Uh, Sister Emma Calderon um, passed away, and we believe that she's on the other side of, of life and in eternity with Jesus, and uh, she was faithful coming to the ministry here in the Spanish ministry with Pastor Pena. So her celebration and homegoing graveside uh, will be uh, Thursday at 1 p.m. in Easton at the Easton Cemetery. So again, a graveside service for Sister Emma Calderon at 1 p.m. at the Easton Cemetery on Thursday. Again, 1 p.m. on Thursday at the Easton Cemetery. So, you know, let's just pray for that family. Lord, we just offer a prayer right now for the Calderon family. Will you comfort their hearts, Lord? Comfort uh, their hearts to know that, Lord, she's with you and God, there one day that is if they know you, God, they'll see her again in all eternity. And we just pray for your peace uh, that passes all understanding to come over their minds and their hearts. Comfort them by your Holy Spirit's power in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, babe. We love you. Um, we just want to take the time, too, to uh, pray for the offering. And if you are giving electronically, thank you for the, uh, I'd say, faithfulness that you all have had to give. We have an app that's called Givelify. Givelify, you can go to that app and you can give electronically. Um, you can find it a couple different ways. You can search online uh, for Givelify, or you can go to the app store in your phone and you can download the app. And when you do, you'll set up a little account and you can find New Hope Family Church and you can, you can give electronically. So we've had so many people do that and we just wanna say, you know, thank you for your generosity to continue to give during this, this time. Of uncertainty. How many of you know that we don't have to be uncertain in the family of God? Amen? We don't have to be uncertain. We just say the world in this time of uncertainty, but we're grounded in our faith in Jesus. And we're grounded knowing that he's in control of our life and he's leading us every step of the way. No matter if you've been furloughed or you've had a job change or whatever your season is in life, God is in control. And I I think it's a, a time where we really need to consider where we're living. I think if anything, over the last seven months, almost eight months now, you know, we just really need to take the time and, and do some inventory, and we're still in this season, and God forbid this happens. And so if any governor or anybody ever catches wind of this, it, God forbid that this goes to the projected 2022. I heard a stat saying, this is gonna be around till 2022. I'm like, rebuke those words. In Jesus name you know and and so what, what it's getting me to really start starting to think in this way forward thinking forward thinking that that it's something that we really have to consider how we build forward so as we consider the kingdom of God I want I'm on this series called the kingdom of God I believe it's important that we have in mind not just today but because what we do matters today but thinking about what God is doing with this overall master plan for his church, for his people, for your family, come on, for, you, for your individual lives. What, what is God doing for you now for the way forward in the future? Think about where we will be two years from now. Think about the things that we do right here, right now in life, the choices that we make, what it's going to look like, the fruit of the decisions that we make going forward years from now how about five years from now how about how about this whenever we were at uh, bible school we had a guy that would come through by the name of rob carmen and he would always talk about people if you wanted to change your life 
you got to get a little uncomfortable. And that means that you might have to give of your time by going back to school, going back to a trade, you know, a trade school. We had uh, Mayor Frankel here last week, and he talked about how going back to a trade school changed his life, changed the trajectory of his family financially. And, and now he's sitting on the council, and he's acting mayor in that role. And, and you look back on somebody's past, the decision, one decision that they made altered their future. So it's important, the decisions that we make, the outcome of our life. And our, our instructor used to tell us, look, if you look at your life, where are you going to be five years from now? Five years from now, where are you going to be? Well, are you going to be in the same place complaining that life is, your life isn't, isn't going anywhere? Your life is meaningless? You know, you, you just don't know what to do? Look at five years from now, if you don't take action, you're going to be doing the same thing. You're going to be complaining. You're going to be in the same place. But if you can move yourself, move, move yourself, find the will of God for your life. Because God is always moving us. He's, he's willing to move us. But we have to be moved ourselves. And so I started thinking about Nehemiah, talking about the kingdom of God and what the kingdom of God looks like. And what did it look like back in history where Jerusalem was established by God and, and then the children of Israel, they, for some reason, they were just stiff-necked people. They just rebelled against the word of God. They, they fell into captivity and exile, and, and, and they, their, their city got ruined, got invaded by Nebuchadnezzar not, Nebuchadnezzar not once, but three times. The walls were, were, were flattened, broken down in some areas, and the gates were, were ripped down and tore up. And, and I started looking at this whole story and this whole scenario in Nehemiah. On Wednesday night, we talked about Nehemiah a little and, and how he was moved when he heard of the news that his city was in ruin. And when he heard, he was moved to the point of weeping. He cried. He was moved so deeply that he fell into this time of mourning. And he was, he was so heavy with this burden of the people being compromised, the city being compromised, open to attack. He was moved so much that he started fasting and praying. You know, we call the fast here from October 1st to October 21st. And if you join that fast and if you sacrifice a little, moved into a little bit of discomfort, I want to say thank you. The Lord will honor you for standing in the gap as an intercessor to pray the will of God into this time, into, the, into your life, into this church, into our city, for our nation. We need it. Keep praying. And if you remove the fast, fast. In fact, today is a call out by Franklin Graham and his ministry declaring a day of fasting for the nation. Now, I didn't make that a, a thing here because we just came off of a 21-day fast, but, but isn't it interesting that the Lord is moving on other people's hearts? That he's moving on other leaders' hearts to, for a call of prayer, for a call of intercession, and also that sacrifice of fasting to move us in that direction we're at a crucial time in this point of history. We're at a critical time. We're at that pivot point. Do you remember playing on the seesaw when you were a kid? Do you remember getting on that? My brother, I'm telling, I'm telling all my brother again. My brother, we used to have fun. We used to go up and down on that. We call it teeter-totter. Up and down, up and down. And he was always bigger than me, faster than me, and he was always trying to outthink me. But do you remember that teeter-totter? Did you ever have that friend? or brother like me, the older brother, when you would get up in the air, right, and then you'd come down, yay, you do it about five times, yay, and there's this anticipation of coming down nice and slow and timely, you're having a good time, and all of a sudden, your older brother jumps off of the teeter-totter, and he goes slamming into the ground, kaboom, okay, that wasn't just me, thank you, you feel my pain? I feel like that's the time we're living in. You know, we're just on this pivot point right here that if we make a certain choice a certain way, that things can ca come crashing down. The children of Israel did that. The life that they were living in disobedience to God, they opened up a door for the enemy to come in and rout them. And see, when the enemy comes to attack you, he comes to attack you to destroy you, to destroy, you know, the, the different things that you have built in your life. And we see this in the story of Nehemiah, that he was moved and grieved to the point where God was saying, look, the reason why you feel this pain 
is I want you to do something with it. Have you ever considered what moves your heart? Have you ever considered the pain that you feel when you watch that little puppy on the channel that he's droopy eyes crying in a shelter and they're saying, please send us that $20 for that puppy. <laughs> you, you, guys, you guys ever, you, you get moved with that, you know, and like, what do you do? Like, oh, here's $200, take it. Save the life of the puppy. God, here, use me. You know, but what happens? You get moved, right? You get moved into, into do something outside of yourself. And, and this is the story of Nehemiah. God came and he touched him and he moved him to come outside of himself to do something for the kingdom of God. It's a great story. And, and you know, I, I want to stay in sync because we have two services. So I was going to take this sermon in a whole different way. I was going to preach about the gates of Jerusalem. But this morning, that service kind of shifted. And we started talking about more of the breaches in the wall and in the gates. So I'm going to take that this, this way this, for this service as well because I want to stay in sync. And I believe I'm going to preach on this maybe for the next week or maybe even two as the Holy Spirit leads. So my plan was to go to Nehemiah 3 and to talk about the different gates and how we can really gather some parallels about our Christian walk and our life with the Lord. But in fact, for this, I, I want to go forward in the story, and I, I want to give a little background of Nehemiah, and then we'll go back to Nehemiah 3 and talk about the gates here next week. But as I began to look at Nehemiah and the call of his life and the moving of his heart, and God was moving him to do something, I believe that it's a picture of what we need to do and where we need to be in the body of Christ right now. Where, would, where do we need to be in the body of Christ we need to wake up. We need to wake up. We need to be sensitive to the Spirit of God that when He's moving on our hearts, that it moves us deeply to consider encountering Him in prayer, going to God with our needs. I think for a long time, the church has appeared to be very active. The church has appeared to be moving into great things. But a lot of times, this is what I began to see that those great things that we considered that were happening, bigger churches, bigger ministries, bigger worship, was just bigger ego, bigger self-idolization. Now, 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 get this. Come on. I mean, I like listening to these dynamic preachers on TV. I like turning on an awesome set of worship, and I like getting into that. But you know what that could do? It could be hypnotizing. It can move us into a slumber that we come into a point where it's so easy and comfortable, it puts us to sleep, and we start to open up these portals that God doesn't want us to open. And it allows us to become vulnerable, vulnerable in our apathy to an invasion of the enemy. I didn't mean to make that rhyme, that's just how it came out. In our apathy, it opens up a door for the enemy to come in and to rout us. So can you, can you hold on to this? Because this is a sermon on the spot. Like right here, this is what the Holy Spirit speaking to us, Diego, and beyond. Let's be careful. Let's be careful right now that as we've been put into isolation and shelter in place, many of us now, pastors, we're talking, we're opening up our doors, we're stepping out in faith. We're taking steps or risks that would be considered risk to expose us to a virus. But I want to say you're covered with the blood of Jesus. You're protected and you're, keep, you're being kept safe. And God will honor your faith to come into a place of worship, not to encounter a, a worship set that's awesome or a word that tickles your ears, but to encounter the reality of his presence. Do you know Daniel just flowed and Brandon, the, the, the worshiping just flowed in, a, in, a, in an amazing way there for, for the last song. That was not a planned song. That was just them spontaneously responding to the heart of God to, to um, let that out through their worship. We had a, another song planned. But, but I'm believing that God is putting people into this place, into this house, in this city, that we're hungry for the now. We're hungering for what God is doing now. What is God doing now? But it's going to take this. It could be a little dangerous to you. It could be a little uncomfortable to you. 
Because what God is doing now is that whenever he touches your heart, he requires action from you. He requires you to take this thing that he's putting in your heart that you're so troubled with, and he begins to move you, he begins to give you a strategy and a plan. One thing that I recognize about Nehemiah is that Nehemiah had an enormous task to, com to complete. He had a huge task. The task that God laid, behind, uh, laid in front of him was to go and to rebuild the walls and to rebuild uh, the gates and to create this fortified city, this community once again. And no longer would the children of Israel have to go to sleep afraid and to be uh, uh, concerned with an invasion in the middle of the night, that they could rest assured that those walls would protect them. Those gates would open and close at their will. I let people out. I allow people to come in. People going out people coming in. They would be able to spot as watchmen on the wall an invading, t uh, an invading enemy. They would, the, the walls were, were high enough where they could see the invasion coming in rather than the enemy just accessing a point and opening and invading their people. They could sleep with peace again. And that moved again Nehemiah's heart. He's going forward and taking action even though the task looked enormous and huge even though the task would require him to push through opposition, Nehemiah had tenacious faith in his God. He, he had this faith that whatever he was asked to do, that God would provide it, that God would have somebody provide for him. And I just love this about Nehemiah. I, I don't know if you know this about, about Nehemiah, but he was the cupbearer to the king. And do you know that the name Nehemiah means... Yahweh comforts. We mentioned that in the first service. So there you go, 11 o'clock. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Those of you watching at home. Nehemiah means Yahweh comfort, comforts. And do you know that he was the cupbearer to Artaxerxes I? He was the, uh, I believe, the king of Persia. And, and this is something that I was looking at. In the cupbearer, the responsibility that he had I started making a parallel. He worked for the government. He was actually involved in inside and actively working among people of influence. So here is a slave guy, somebody who was taken captive, living in captivity, but living in royalty. Come on, somebody. Even in this, in, in, Nehemiah was special. This guy was a special guy. This is something that I began to see. Wow, God's favor was upon Nehemiah. And how do I know that God favored him? Because of what he went with the request to Artaxerxes. You can go back and read Nehemiah 1, Nehemiah 2, and Nehemiah 3. I'm going to go forward to Nehemiah 4 and then go backward next week. But when you think about Nehemiah and you see his responsibility was to be, to be the cupbearer to the king. Why was it important to be a cupbearer to the king? Did you know that the throne was always being threatened by people? Did you know that there was always inside jobs trying to be, to, you know, had to overthrow the king? Did you know that it took somebody very trusted to hold the cup of the king? Did you know that Nehemiah was a trusted servant? That he protected the king with the responsibility of offering again the king's cup? meals or whenever he requested it. Why was it important? You know, people try to poison the king's water, the king's drink. And so Nehemiah had this responsibility of keeping the king alive. Isn't that awesome? Here's this, this, this guy again living in, in captivity. God gave him a huge responsibility. I just always liken it back to our life and how we're living in this world fallen world, this kingdom, you know, that people build for themselves. God's looking for trusted saints today. He's looking for people that he can trust with the content in their cup to offer it up to the king, King Jesus. What do you have in your cup? What do you have in your cup today? What, is, what are you allowing to be poured inside of your cup? Are you allowing purity are you allowing things that are pure to be poured in that cup so that when that cup is poured out or when it's offered for a drink that your life is not poisoned to those around you? 
that your life is not a stench to the nostrils of God or a poison. Your worship's not poison. Your worship isn't tainted. Your worship is pure and holy and right before King Jesus. You see how the parallel is? God uses people who are humble. God uses people who are simple. God used Nehemiah as a cupbearer of Artaxerxes. You know, when God moved Nehemiah, he moved him with a plan. He, he put together a strategy. He put together, uh, a, a, I would say, a technique, a, something that came together that was really strategic in how it needed to be done. One of the things that we see with, with Nehemiah is that it took a team effort for the walls to be repaired, for the gates to be reestablished. Nehemiah's task was enormous, took a team effort, and it required a plan. Those three things. It was, again, it was a huge task. It was enormous. It, was, it took a team effort, and it required a plan. How many of you know that when you are in fellowship with God, and when you're connected to your Heavenly Father, that He will give you plans to succeed? How do we know that Nehemiah was favored? Because everything that he did, he did in prayer first. And when he went to God in prayer, he would always say, remember me, O God. Remember me, O God. Remember me, O God. Why is that important? It's okay to pray for favor on your life. You know that my dad and mom prayed favor upon my family, my brother, and my sister, my life, our whole life. I always heard my dad always I bless my kids. I ask the favor of God to rest on my kids. We pray the same prayer over our, our kids. We pray that prayer over people, over family, over friends. God, I pray that your hand of protection come, but God, I pray your favor upon their life, your blessing upon their life. But you know, one of the things I realize this, God does answer prayers of the faithful. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He was a righteous man. Why? Because we saw God listen to his prayer and then pour his favor out upon Nehemiah's life. And without having to go back in the text and reading through, because it's pretty lengthy, I want you to know that whenever Nehemiah was moved, he, he actually moved into the season of prayer, prayer and fasting, called out to God. That was just us seeing that he had a relationship with God. He knew where to turn in dire, in a dire situation. That's just for us to hold on to today. Right now, during this time that we're living in, we better be turning to God in prayer. But what does your love relationship look like with God? Where did, what is your commitment with your Heavenly Father, your life commitment, your spiritual commitment? What does that look like? And again, without bringing condemnation, without you know slamming you into the ground and, and bringing something heavy upon your life, what does your commitment look like to God? Are you apathetic in your walk right now? Be careful. Because if you have fallen into this stupor and this apathy, this could be an opportunity for the enemy to come in. And these are the things that we need to be aware. And we see again in the life of Nehemiah, when he would go to God, God showed up in his life. God did remember him. And we see it in action as the king favor, gave him favor to go to his hometown, his home, homeland, his, his, his uh, you know, I'd say beloved Jerusalem, and begin to exercise, exercise the thing that God was putting in his life, executing this plan to rebuild the walls and the gates. Think about this with me. He went boldly before the king, and he was, he, in, in chapter two, you'll see he was kind of downcast, and the king's like, what's the matter with you? What's going on? You know, you're never like this, but he's like, oh, well, again, if it please the king, my people are suffering, their, their city is in ruins, and, and if, it, if, if I could gain favor from you, king, will you please allow me to go to rebuild the walls? But, but when I go, I need a letter from you. I need to go to this person. I need to access the forest. I need the wood. I need to go and, and build the walls and the gates, and I need to maybe even establish a home for myself. And, and he's laying all this out there, and the king's like, well, how long are you going to be gone? And he's like, well, just for a short time and go back and read it. But, but it was one of these things that he says, okay, then go. Go ahead and go. And he received the favor. Listen, not only did he have favor from God this way, God gave him favor horizontally. Connected to his heavenly father, but also favor to go and to connect with people. 
But how many of you know in this story, in the story of Nehemiah, and this is true for all of us, that when we get, when we get charged with a task to complete, when we get commissioned with the task, it's not going to come easy. He experienced opposition. People began to come against his plan like, hey, the only reason why you're, you're building this kingdom is because you're going to rise up against the king. And they started telling lies about him. But you know what? Those were untrue. These were, these were lies. He was, his heart was set on doing what was right and what was good. He, his life was set in order and, and, uh, and what was the word? And commissioned by God to go and to repair the walls for his people. It was nothing else. It was no ulterior motive. It was, not, it was not for himself. And you can read forward. Everything that he did, he did it for others. He came out of himself and he began to, again, execute the plan that God was giving him. It started to come to pass. Not for himself. He gave of his time. He gave of his resources. And God began to show forth through, through Nehemiah's life. But here's the crazy thing. God gave him a strategy for the building of the walls, rebuilding of the walls and rebuilding of the gates that this family here in their community would be uh, commissioned to work on this part of the gate in their neighborhood. This one would go to work over here next to this one. This one would work, and they worked in, in teams. They worked together. And, and what God was showing me is that sometimes when we get called, when we get called, we don't have to go across town and to, you know, go do all of this other stuff. Look, God's just calling you right here. Do this right here. Build right here. Be content right here. And God's given us as a church a responsibility right here in Selma. That as we come together as a team, that it's a collective effort to minister to people in this house, but also outside this house, outside our four walls in this community. I want to say this. I'll say it again loudly. Selma, listen, God, God needs us to step into our community. God needs you to step into your community. I'm believing this, and I just talked to somebody earlier. God's going to open up opportunities for even us to go to work in city government places. He's going to open up these opportunities. You're going to say, well, Pastor, I never thought about working in the city. And I don't ever want to go and get in, into the city. Listen, God needs you to be a cupbearer, even in the, our local governments, in your cities. Go to work. Be the light in the city of Selma, in the city that you live in. Go to work. Take those jobs. It's going to go to somebody. Why not you? Why not you, a righteous seed, coming with the light of Jesus to come and serve our community? Listen, Selma's a great place to live. It's a great city. We need to bring uh, the, the plan of God to this place. Why not fill these positions with people of God? I'm just excited about the, the opportunity for us to see God's favor moving on our church. And when we you know, had um, the, the acting mayor right now here last week, and we got to see how our local government is, is working and last week's sermon, I don't even know if it flashed on the screen, I was going to be preaching a sermon called Our Town, Our Town. And I believe God is allowing us to build our city, to build forward. What we do now is going to matter in two years, five years, ten years, fifty years. The decisions that our city council makes are going to impact our city for the days to come. So it's important that we pray for some. We pray for people that being, are being appointed as leaders in our community. And we pray that God holds their heart in his hand. We don't want a selfish, you know, city council. We don't want people who are out for their own benefit. We want people who are sensitive to the needs of the people for the greater good of our community. That was Nehemiah. Nehemiah was, was tenderhearted. He was moved with compassion on people, putting people in the right place to do the right thing at the right time in the right season to build forward for, uh, toward the master plan. I just want to continue to stay in the attitude that we're not just to build within the four walls. We need to look outside as well. We need to see hearts and lives and people in our own neighborhoods. And we need to begin to reach out. Pray for them. Pray for them. I'm praying for my neighbors. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for your family, your fathers, your mothers, your, your, your brothers, sisters, your kids. Pray for them. God has put us together as family. And I believe God has purpose for families to come together. You know what I'm praying for the future? Household salvation. 
I'm praying for household salvations. I'm praying that when, when one mama gets saved, that all of her children are going to get saved and her deadbeat husband's going to get saved. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, I'm praying that we're going to see household salvations like we saw in the book of Acts, in Acts 10, where Cornelius, his whole family, got saved. I'm believing that that day is upon us. But you know the challenge that I have? What breaches do we have in our town? Right here in our life what breaches do we have in this heart of mine in your heart in your mind what breaches have you allowed the enemy to come in you know that that saying i said it last week i think i said it last week but garbage in garbage out garbage in garbage out what doors have you allowed to open what things have come and flooded your life and that are man i'm telling you it is ransacking your home ransacking your town ransacking you spiritually, ransacking you mentally, physically, even spiritually. This whole thing has, has caused people to go away back into their whole old lifestyle. People have been drawn away back into old habits. We've had pastors, we've had, you know, friends and ministers and elders and deacons and people, you know, not necessarily from this church, but from other churches, people have fallen into sin. You know, it, you get that call, and you, you kind of know in the tone, hey, you got a moment. Man, you know what? Right now, this is a time of grace. I'm just going to watch. There's somebody watching right here, right now, somebody in here. This is, a, this is a moment and a season of grace. God has given you an opportunity to repent and to turn away from your sin. Go the other direction. Right now, if you've messed up, we said it earlier, repent. Make your life right with God. Give your heart over to Him. Get put back in sync with that relationship with your Heavenly Father. Make things right today. Because I'm afraid that in the days to come, we may not have that opportunity again. We may not be given that opportunity. We may be given our own life over to destruction. We may think that this little sin now would be okay, but it will consume you eventually to the point of your walls falling down, your life falling into destruction. But I want to say this is a day that God's calling us to rebuild. God's calling us to rise up. God's calling us to bring the, the restoration to the walls of our spiritual life. God is calling us to reestablish the foundations in our walk with God. You know, I don't know about you, but it's, it, it doesn't come easy. It doesn't come easy. And sometimes once you make that decision to live for the Lord, it doesn't come easy. You're going to always have opposition. You're going to always feel like there's something pushing against you. But remember, hold on to faith. Be tenacious about, about your relationship with God. I'm telling you, if you're ever in love with somebody, if somebody tries to cut into your relationship, hey, who do you think you are? Huh? Who do you think you know? That's my lover. I love that woman. I love that man. Oh, who do you think? Look, at that's God in you. The enemy's trying to come in, and maybe we have opened up those doors, but but God says, no, 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 you're mine. That's me. That's my love. Your love belongs to me, and my love definitely belongs to you. And I'm telling you right now, right here, this is a time and oppor opportunity for us to walk in that restoration and to build up our relationship with him. So what is God doing during this time, and how do we repair the breaches in the wall? How do we repair these breaches? I want you guys to go home and read Nehemiah one through four. Just go study that. Go look at that. In fact, there's only 13 chapters. You could go through this. But one of the things that we see that even though Nehemiah had opposition, he had a plan, a master plan, and that was to restore the walls around Jerusalem and to put the gates back together. Okay, so that was number one. What and how do we repair the breach in the wall? Number one, for our own life, restoring our fellowship with God. What is the foundation that we have as Christians to live our life forward? It's very, very simple. This is the blueprint. This is the foundation of our life. It's the Word of God. How many of you know right now is more important now than ever that we become Bible literates? Even the times that we're in, we need to be like the sons of Issachar to see the signs of the times and not to be led astray down this popular teaching or this you know, conspiracy theory or whatever it is, but to get our face in the book and establish a firm foundation 
And that relationship with God Almighty is established, and we won't be shaken by every wind of doctrine, every false lie, everything that comes out against us to shake us up and invade us. Man, this is a time right now, I'm telling you, that the enemy is trying to confuse people. He's trying to really confuse people. Who's right? Who's wrong? And what side do I fall on? Who do I believe? Can I tell you this? You fall on the side of the one true God. You fall on the side of the King of kings and Lord of lords. That is the side we fall on. So politically, don't get all mixed up out there. This is our foundation. This is where we stand. This is what we need restored in our life. We need the word of God restored in our life. Number two is this. We need to develop a lifestyle of prayer. When we develop a lifestyle of prayer, can I tell you something? You will become more alert. You'll become more alert to the things around you. You'll become more alert to the enemies that are trying to invade your life. Do you know that prayer gives you a sensitivity and a discernment of the spirits that are out there that are trying to climb those walls or tear down those walls or bust down those gates? God gives you discernment, and it comes by you inclining your ear and becoming familiar with his voice in a time of prayer. When you look at Nehemiah 4, go through that, there were these oppo opposition, these voices coming at Nehemiah, voices coming within, you know, the, the work that he was doing. But it did not stop him. Why? Because he knew the voice of his heavenly father. He knew that there was a mandate on his life to rebuild. So develop a lifestyle of prayer. Develop a lifestyle of being of training your ear to being alert to the warnings of the Holy Spirit. Right now, I'm telling you, we need to see God restore some breaches in our life. There's going to be old things trying to come back right now, old mindsets, old habits, all those things of old. But you know what they do when we allow those in is that they poison us. They poison us. Remember that cup. We don't want, want to allow the enemy to pour anything in that cup. We're guarding our life. We're guarding it through prayer. We're guarding it through the word and through standing on the word. We're guarding what God has given us. We are not allowing anybody else to poison us. This is important for us right now. The breach is within the wall. We need to, we need to reinforce those areas. So number three was this. We need to position ourselves. We need to position ourselves and we need to stand guard. We need to stand guard. One of the things that they did throughout this story here, go back and read it. Read it again. I'm going to keep encouraging you. Read it. This is a great time. They were going to work, and then they have this opposition, and they were, being, they were afraid that they were going to be attacked. So then Nehemiah says, okay, hold on. Look, we're going to have some of you working, and we're going to have some of you guarding and protecting with weapons. So when they, when, they, when they were given this commission to rebuild, they weren't just skilled workers. They were warriors. God called them to be warriors. What is a, what a, a soldier? Is another word. God called them to be soldiers. And, and this is something that's just coming alive to me as I'm, I'm just speaking this message here, is that whenever we see God moving, he will give you not only the strength to build, he will give you the strength to fight. And how do you fight? Man, we, we, we're ready. We're equipped with the word of God. We're equipped with God's word. We're going to remind God of his word. We're going to be equipped in prayer. We're going to be equipped in the fellowship of the saints, strengthening each other. Look, hey, hey, neighbor, you're helping me. I'm helping you. Iron sharpening iron right here on the spot, building positioning ourselves and standing guard. I love it. I love this. It said they had a tool in one hand and a sword in the other. So how are we going to build forward right now in the day that we live in? How are we going to see things repaired and breaches in the wall and the gates repaired? We're going to work and we're going to fight. It's a season that we live in. It's a season we're living in. So I got the goosebumps right now. What do they call them on the American Idol? I got the goosies. I got the goosebumps right now, and this is why, because I looked over at my daughters. And in here, this is a really interesting thing. Nehemiah had assigned tasks. I'll talk about it next week a little bit more. 
he had assigned tasks to like the high priest, to the other priest, to goldsmith, to perfume makers, to rulers of districts and half of districts, to the Levites and to merchants. And in, in, in verse 12 of uh, chapter 3, it said, even the daughters of one ruler were in involved in the difficult work. Get this, ladies, ladies. God is involving you in the restoration of his kingdom right here, right now in this generation. This is an amazing season for our ladies, for our women. And you know what, men? We're going to serve and support. We're going to stand behind them and see that God has created them to be those mighty women of valor as well. Women of faith with a tool in one hand and a sword in the other hand. <laughs> Come on. I see my girls that way. I see, I see you ladies that way. You're skilled at what you do, maybe even more than some men. I don't know. <laughs> see all those do-it-yourself shows out there on the Internet. There's a lot of ladies out there hammering and pounding down some walls, right? But God has given you ladies a position as well in his kingdom. God is allowing you to position yourself and to stand guard. You have a responsibility for your family. You could be a watch woman over your families. God can position you with discernment so that when you see, ah, that is a wolf, <laughs> get that wolf out of here. That man doesn't belong in my life. No, I got a man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I got a man. That was a song, wasn't it? A song. Oh, come on. I'm inspired to speak that out. So think about this. How should we go about the task? We're going to go about it strong in the Lord and in our faith. We're going to stand so that we can withstand every attack of the enemy. We're going to become equipped by the word of God, and we're going to become equipped in prayer. When we become equipped in prayer, that's when we receive the favor of God in our life to do, to be moved, to do the things of God. How does this come? It comes with a, through a life of humility, a life of servanthood. A selfless life and we come and we give our life away willingly to a loving God we come in submission to him because when we submit to him then we resist the enemy tell me this is fresh off of the Holy Spirit like this is this is like I, like I don't even have some of this written down like this is what God is speaking to us right here there are breaches in the walls of our life, and we need to do something. It seems like a big task, but God has showed us how to do this. Sometimes I think as the body of Christ, we get tired. We get, you know, the coronavirus. Oh, I got to go back to church now. <laughs> I got to go outside. I got to meet outside. Oh, you mean 11 o'clock? It's going to be on YouTube. I can stay home. Or right now we're having technical difficulties, but it's on Facebook you know, I mean, I mean, it's easy, it's easy, but let's be careful not to create this breach for the enemy to come in and attack us in this, in the apathetic mindset. So let's stay motivated as the body of Christ. And if anything, what we need to do right now, we need to not give our time over to the enemy. We need to give some overtime into the building of the kingdom. They work solid 52 days they accomplished the task that God had put forward through Nehemiah. And I'll tell you what, they stood in amazement. They stood back like, how did we do this? And you know what happened after that? What, from, from what happened, the fruit of this is that Ezra stood up and began to preach the word of God. And their hearts were crushed and broken. And they cried out, they cried out in, to, you know, for mercy, for God, forgive us in repentance to God. They confessed their sins, and they got their life right with God. That covenant that he established with his people, they were reminded of it, and they began to welcome again the fellowship with their Heavenly Father into their life. I'm telling you, we're living in a challenging time. We're living in a serious time, and I know the decisions that we make right now, they could alter our future. But get this, let's let the decisions that we make and the choices that we make alter our tomorrow for his master plan. Amen? For the plan of our Heavenly Father, for the plan of Jesus. He's the cornerstone. He 
He is the one that we're building on. You know, we're building all this for him. And I'm praying this, God, will you come? But in your timing, in your timing, Lord, help me to make ready the way of the Lord so that when you do come, Lord, you have a sweet bride. You have an amazing encounter with your, your bride that you love. And I want to see us join him for all eternity. Amen. Will you stand to your feet this morning? Let's stand before the Lord. Next week, I'll move into the gates a little bit more as we talk forward through the book of Nehemiah. Father, thank you for this moment that we've had to consider how we are living our life. And if we have any walls that have fallen down in faith, maybe we've been a little tired in our goings in and coming out in the last seven months. Maybe we've we feel a little worn out. Maybe we feel like giving up even. And Lord, today you're calling us as a reminder to be builders, to be wall builders. And Father, I just pray for those that are present here, those that are watching at home. Father, if there's any apathy right now, any laziness in our pursuit of you, forgive us. Forgive us. Lord, when we feel nudged by the Holy Spirit to pray or nudged in the, by the Holy Spirit to read and to study our word, to get stronger. Lord, some of us have turned the other way and we haven't followed. But Lord, this morning, not again with condemnation, but with the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that you're nudging our hearts to step out of our apathy into being moved by you, by God himself, to do something productive to build his kingdom. Move us, Holy Spirit. Move us by the hand of God. Move our lives forward so that what we do will impact another life and will impact our family's life for the days to come, for our future. Until we could stand to behold the glory of God for the, some of us in person, some of us will have passed. But when we come out of that grave, we'll be able to behold the glory and the beauty of Jesus. Thank you for preparing us, the church, the bride of Christ. And Lord, this morning, if there's any breaches in our, in our lives, we want to have those identified. And right now, just all over this place at home, I just pray the Holy Spirit shed light upon those things that maybe you have opened up a door for and invited things in. And it's caused some destruction. It's caused some pain. It's caused some, some behavior, some sin. You've been doing things you know you shouldn't be doing. Right now, we just stop that and we make it right. Deal with our hearts. Thank you for the opportunity that we had to take communion to remind us of the covenant that we have in Jesus Christ. And all over this place, if, if you have not been living right, every, every head's bowed and every eye's closed. It's between you and God. Anybody here that has not been walking right with the Lord, you say, Pastor, I just need to get back into it with the Lord. And if that's you this morning, I want to give those an opportunity. Amen. You can put your hand down. I just want to lead you in a prayer, just really simply, those at home, if you've never given your life to Jesus, say this prayer with me and invite Jesus as your first step into a relationship, a love relationship with your heavenly father say dear lord jesus i open wide the door of my heart and i ask you to come in be my lord and be my savior repair the walls of my heart restore those gates and i open up my heart for the new things that you want to do in me i open up my heart for the glory of god to be revealed in me and through me, right here, right now. The Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me with power, power to overcome all the schemes of the enemy and allow my life to be a witness for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You pray that prayer, you mean it, you take it to heart, and you start to build forward. Don't let anything stop you, no matter what opposition, no matter what voices come against you. You keep building forward. Don't quit. Don't stop. Amen. Isn't that good news? Let's repair those breaches in the wall this morning. Amen. Praise God. For those of you at home, we meet. Those of you here as well, we meet at 7 o'clock right here on Wednesdays. We are opening up the church, the sanctuaries. We're meeting in the sanctuary at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. My wife and I will do a little devotional, but we are doing it online as well. I'm encouraging people to, to return back to the church. Come back in. We still have some physical distancing that we do, but the church doors are open. We had a great crowd this morning. 
We had a great time in, in Jesus. Listen, every time we open the doors, we should have a great time in Jesus, right? Coming together as Christians, finding that strength to walk life out. If you're watching from another church, I pray the grace of God will give your pastors wisdom and how to open up your doors, how to open up and put together your services again. But I'm praying that God has something for you. He, he's not forgotten you. God has something for you to do. It's not over till he comes back. Amen? Until he comes back. So I pray a blessing on you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Have a great week.